Hello and welcome back to an academy. Myself, Dr. Muskan Chaudhary, and today we'll uh, study about the closed radium, which is a topic of the day, and we'll cover all the important points about the closed radium. So, first, talking about the UN Academy. Now, UN Academy is the India's largest learning platform, which you choose the best from the best, and you can assess both the live and the recorded sessions, so that you will be able to assess the recorded classes whenever and wherever. For those students who are, uh, it's quite difficult who are working as well because they can't uh, keep the record with the live sessions, so they can watch the recorded sessions. Learning from the topmost India's educators for every medical examination, be it NEET, UG, be it uh, PG examination or FMG examination, or be any other competitive examination, uh, an academy is the best platform. You can compete in the live TNDs with uh, test preparation, analyzer preparation. Now, you can study on the device anywhere and assess around 25,000 of the MCQ, which is huge. And uh, from all the important topics, the questions has been taken down to help you analyze the performance and to make you stand in the competition. Printed notes and the digital notes are being provided. I can subscriptions where the prep letter has come together with the UN Academy and you get the clinical and the integrated essential with the video lectures from the dream team with the Q banks, rapid revision sessions and the snapshots and the 2021 dream notes. With where structure live batches, recorded classes, Q banks with around 25,000 MCQs and competitive TNDs with the digital and the printed notes. All right, and uh, uh, for uh, for uh, subscriptions, I would recommend to have at least uh, one to two subscriptions on the plus or the iconic so that you can have, uh, because when compared to the economical, it's quite cheap as a Koji platforms and you can use, uh, just use my code that is MUSKAN10 to get 10% of the discount. All right. Now, raise your hand features that is something unique and uh, you can speak to learners, raise your hand and personalize experience with one-on-one -on -one live interaction with your favorite educator and can take part in the quizzes, vivas and the doubt solving sessions. Now, uh, the uh, next examination, the next day, that is a uh, subject wise test monthly that is happening, going to happen on the 23rd of the October from 2 to 4 p.m. with 120 MCQs. All right, effective and highly effective and already Q banks, uh, which is based on the latest examination pattern. And use my code that is MUSKAN10 to get 10% of the discount all right uh in what are the features of special classes that they are interactive and you can do the polling for the learners and for the understanding of the topic uh, you can do the raise a hand feature and do net the get the notification for the uh, your favorite educators for the lessons that you are about to learn and do get the lectures notes and attend the live class participate in the live chat and get your doubts clear all all that is anywhere time and anywhere with 24 months, uh, with 24 month subscriptions, you get four month subscription totally free, and with the 12 month subscriptions, you get two month totally free, which is valid uh, until now till 21st of the October. All right, and please do use my code that is Muskan10 to get 10% of the discount. Now, the topic of the day today, we'll be discussing about the closed radium. We'll uh, today discuss about the spore forming bacteria that is the closed radium. Okay, now, <clears throat> talking about the closed stridium, talking about the closed stridium, the first thing is that, that is they are what? They are gram-positive, gram-positive bacillus. And what is the motility? Motility, they are, first thing that we need to remember that they are spore-forming. Spore-forming and what kind of spore? That is, they are having what? Bulging spore bulging spore all right now they are what motile and that is peritrichus flagella peritrichus flagella with exceptions we need to remember the exception what is the exception exception includes includes the closed radium per fringes and closed radium kidney okay mainly type Six. Okay, so they are what? They are what? They are non-motile. They are what? Non-motile. All right. Although they are what? Capsulated. Uh, they are non-capsulated. But it also has an exception. That is what? Clostridium. Clostridium per fringes is what? 
closed radium per fringes is what capsulated okay so what are the key points of the closed radium at the gram positive bacillus and they are spore forming two bacteria were the spore forming one was the bacillus and another was the closed radium bacillus what having non bulging spores and the closed radium has the bulging spores they are what having the peritrichous flagella that is they are motile and what is the name of the motility they are having what stately motility Okay, they are having what stately motility, but exceptions of the non-motile is what closed radium perfringes, and it is also exception uh, exception that they are capsul capsulated. And another non-motile closed radium is what closed radium titan. Now all of them, all of them are what obligate obligate. And arrow. All right, all of them they are what obligate and arrow, but here also exception. And what is that? Is what closed stadium per fringes, which is what arrow. Okay, so where is the closed stadium per fringes? Is an exception that it is not obligate air and arrow. Plus, it is what it is what capsulated. Plus, it is what. non motile so it is an exception of what clostridium general family okay and we need to remember that what are the examples of the obligate and arrow that is what back what is b p is what bacterioids a for what actinomyces actinomyces and c for what clostridium c for what closed stadium so they all are what they all are what obligate obligate and arrow obligate and arrow okay so closed stadium is an obligate and arrow it has peritrichous flagella with stately motility but exception is that closed stadium per fringes and the closed stadium tetanus are uh, tetanae they are what non motile although they are non capsulated but closed stadium per fringes also has an exception that it is what capsulated and all of them are what obligate and arrow but exception is what uh, again per fringes so per fringes exception in most of the cases of the closed stadium general features now coming when we talk about the spore the spore the generally the spores of the closed stadium they are killed at what they are killed at 100 degree celsius at 100 degree celsius but exception again but the spores of the closed stadium botulism and the closed stadium per fringes again closed stadium per fringes mainly type a they are what they are what very heat resistant heat resistant and what is the temperature that will need here for them they can survive up to 100 degree celsius and we need 121 degree celsius for 15 minutes for the uh, the sterilization by the spores of the clostridium botulinum and per fringes although all the spores of the clostridium are killed at 100 degree celsius but again clostridium botulinum and the clostridium per fringes they are again exceptions that they are heat resistant and they can survive the 100 degree celsius temperature all right now when we talk about the spores when we talk about the spores now they are having what bulging spores they are having what bulging spores we remember two families uh, two bacteria that is one was the bacillus and another was the clostridium that is the two spore forming bacteria and b was having non bulging and c was having the bulging spores all right and depending upon the position depending upon the position of the spores they may be even central spores okay they may either have the central spores that is in the closed stadium per fringes or subterminal spores subterminal spores that is also known as what uh, citron bodies and present in the closed stadium histolyticum closed stadium botulinum closed stadium novi and closed stadium septicum that is you can remember that we remember bhms so that is bhns that is closed stadium botulinum cause closed stadium histolyticum closed stadium novi and the closed stadium septicum they are having what they are having the subterminal spores they are having what subterminal bulging spores and the central spores are present where in the closed stadium per fringes
ठीक है सो दिस इज वॉट अबाउट द स्पोर्स दैट वी टॉक अबाउट नेक्स्ट पोजिशन ऑफ द स्पोर्स दैट वी नीड रिमेंबर एंड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज वॉट टर्मिनल स्पोर्स दैट इज वॉट टर्मिनल स्पोर्स बट दीज टर्मिनल स्पोर्स आर वॉट सर्कुलर आर वॉट सर्कुलर एंड वॉट इज द नेम दैट वी गिव इज वॉट ड्रम स्टिक अपियरेंस ड्रम स्टिक अपियरेंस ऑफ द स्पोर्स ड्रम स्टिक अपियरेंस दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द प्रो स्ट्रेट दम टिटने that is what drumsticks appearance that is having the terminal spores that is having what terminal spores and this is what circular spore circular terminal spore giving the appearance of what drumstick appearance that is what clostridium tetanum important to remember this one now another that is what terminal spores spore is terminal but it is what oval in shape oval in shape that is giving the shape of the tennis racket tennis racket how it will appear that is all the terminal spore but it is what oval in shape oval in shape all right that is giving the appearance of what the <coughs> tennis racket all right and where it is present in the present in the closed radium tertium and closed radium deficit ठीक है फर्स्ट वी रेड अबाउट द सेंट्रल स्पोर दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द कोस्टेडियम परफ्रेंजेस एंड द सब टर्मिनल स्पोर दैट इज बी एच एन एस आई ऑलरेडी दैट इज द बॉटिलिनम हिस्टोलिटिकम सेप्टिकम एंड नोवी टर्मिनल स्पोर बट सर्कुलर दैट इज गिविंग द अपियरेंस ऑफ डोमेस्टिक अपियरेंस इन द टिटने एंड द क्लोज स्टेडियम विद ओवर शेप गिविंग द अपियरेंस ऑफ द टेनिस रैकेट इन द क्लोज स्टेडियम टर्शियम एंड द डेफिसियल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी ले लू क्या काउंसलिंग में यस यू कैन गो एड एंड पहले आपको ये सोचना है कि जो कोई भी ब्रांच लेने से पहले उसको ब्रांच लेने के बाद का सीक्वेंस आपको थोड़ा सोचना होगा कि ना वेदर यू आर वेरी मच ओके विद द ब्रांच क्योंकि कई बार ऐसे होता है कि द पीपल थिंक अबाउट समथिंग एल्स एंड दे एंड एंड it 70 to 80 percent people are those students are those they think about something else and they land up in something else in the branch when we talk about the branch it happens with most of the students so uh you have to make mind for that uh if it is like uh you uh you uh, prefer bras or something else and it was a first job or you are intern so you can take another chance but it's like that you're uh and you have studied a lot and you're fed up okay okay um it was a saturation for me then you can uh, go ahead there's nothing wrong with any branch uh you but you have to get satisfied with everything mental peace is the most important i guess when we uh, after the branch kyunki kai baar it's uh, adjustment even after people are so many that you have to think a favorite branch and they also are not satisfied and they uh, leave that seat you must have seen those people as well सो so, थोड़ा अपने आप को जानो एंड uh, थोड़ा सोचो दैट uh, कितनी मेंटल कैपेबिलिटी आपकी है एंड आर यू ओके विद एवरीथिंग दैट यू आर गेटिंग एंड इफ नॉट देन यू आर नॉट लाइक दोस्त की मैं कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं कर सकता एंड तो यू शेल नॉट बी अगर आपका एक दो चांस आपने लिया यू कैन गो हैड विद फर्दर चांसेज एंड इफ नॉट की प्रॉब्लम विद एनी ब्रांच इज नथिंग यू कैन ऑन मैनी विद ऑन मनी विद एनी ब्रांच ठीक है उसकी तो प्रॉब्लम आएगी नहीं बिकॉज देर इज नो ब्रांच दैट इज टोटली सेचुरेटेड इन इंडिया देर इज नथिंग लाइक दैट सो पैसों का बात टेक इट टू डोंट टेक इट एज अ प्रिफरेंस टेक इट एज की ना वॉट यू वॉन्टेड टू बी एंड इज इट इज ओके लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल दे एंड विद समथिंग एल्स एंड दे आर क्वाइट नॉर्मल आफ्टर वन और टू मंथ एंड इट टेक्स इट डज टेक्स प्लेस टू थोड़ा सेटल होने में लगता है इवन फॉर एवरी वन फॉर मी एज वेल ठीक है सो just go ahead with the branch uh, if you are totally okay and just look at the college ki college mein exposure thoda acha ho so that uh, when you uh, leave the college after your md uh, the possibilities for you for getting the job is very uh, easy with college ka naam bhi it equally important all right ओके सो हम कहाँ पे थे हम लोग कल्चर की बात कर रहे थे नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट द कल्चर नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट द कल्चर ऑफ द क्लोज स्टेडियम विल टॉक अबाउट द कल्चर ऑफ द क्लोज स्टेडियम ठीक है नाउ कल्चर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कल्चर ऑफ द क्लोज स्टेडियम क्लोज स्टेडियम क्या है ऑब्लीगेट ऑब्लीगेट एन एरो ऑब्लीगेट एन एरो ठीक है तो इसको अपन को क्या चाहिए होगा वी आर नीडिंग वॉट एन एरोबिक एनवायरमेंट एंड वी कैन यूज स्ट्रिक्टली एन एरोबिक कंडीशन स्ट्रिक्टली एन एरोबिक कंडीशन that is what uh, one is what having a macintosh macintosh jar we are having what macintosh jars for creating the anaerobic condition for the closed stadium and another we can use another we can use is the sterile 
jelly on the top we can use a sterile jelly on the top of the media and very important that is a robertson cooked media broth robertson cooked media broth that is having what that is having the beef heart meat particles beef heart meat particles and it is what having the glutathione it is what having the glutathione in the reduced form in the reduced form of the glutathione that will consume the oxygen that is present in the environment in the media and will create the media uh, and aerobic plus it also has a petroleum jelly layer on the top so that create the better and aerobic media all right now we need to remember some examples that are predominantly predominantly saprophytic pre dominantly pre uh, the saprophytic uh, clostridium that is they get their food by dissolving the organic mat uh, material and that is a clostridium perfringens clostridium perfringens clostridium deficient clostridium perfringens clostridium deficient clostridium novi and clostridium septicum okay clostridium novi clostridium septicum clostridium perfringens and uh, clostridium deficit clostridium novi and the clostridium septicum all right now talking about the first we will talk about the first bacteria first uh, lead, uh, just talk about those, those points that we have talked ki sabse important that we need to remember that clostridium is what a peritrichous flagella peritrichous flagella that is it is motile but clostridium titani and the clostridium perfringens they are non motile it has what type of motility that is stately motility that is what stately motility all right now spores we have talked about most important we need to remember is one is the terminal spores and that are what the that are what uh, circular or the spherical that is a drumstick appearance that is what the drumstick appearance that is present in the clostridium titani another is what the resembling the tennis racket you can say this is what the tennis uh, uh tennis racket appearance this was the spherical uh, drumstick appearance and the tennis racket appearance that is oval that is present in the clostridium tertium sub -ter terminals uh, we remembered by the mnemonic that is b h and s that is the botulinum uh, this histolyticum novi and the septicum with the central spores that is present in the bifermentes as well in the clostridium perfringens all right anaerobic culture media how did we create it that is a macintosh 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 dart for the anaerobic media that is production of the vacuum and the displacement of the remaining of the oxygen with the other gases all right and uh, this is what robertson cooked media bro that is having what beef heart particles beef heart particles that is having what reduced glutathione reduced glutathione and with the petroleum jelly over the top with the petroleum jelly over the top all right now first we'll talk about the uh, this clostridium perfringens now clostridium perfringens that is it is what it is non motile it is what it is what it is non motile and this is again an exception that it is what capsulated it is again an exception that it is what capsulated and the spores the spores are uh, they are what spores are destructed at uh at the, at the 100 degree celsius that is normal spores of the clostridium are destructed at 100 degree celsius but at 121 degree celsius all right so this is an exception that they are non motile plus they are capsulated and this destruction of the spore doesn't occur at the 100 degree celsius because they are having what heat resistant they are highly heat resistant spore of the clostridium bottle now and the clostridium perfringens other important point that we need to remember please remember that they are capsulated very important another important point is that they grow at they grow at 45 degree celsius they grow at what 45 degree celsius about the clostridium perfringens and they show and they show they show what target hemolysis they show what target hemolysis they show what very important clostridium perfringens they show what target hemolysis they show what naglers reaction they show what naglers reaction and they are responsible for causing the gas gangrene these are the key important points that we need to remember that they show the target hemolysis or the double zone of hemolysis or the double zone of the hemolysis 
they show what the target hemolysis or the double zone of the hemolysis plus they have the lecithinase activity and it is shown on the media containing the lecithin in the x serum media that is they show the nagler's reaction that we'll see further and they are main organism the most common organism that is causing the gas ganglion other closed radium that is how we remember that is the p and n and s that is closed radium closed radium perfringes closed radium novi closed radium septicum they all are responsible for causing what gas gangrene gas gangrene other than this even a histolyticum is also causing the gas gangrene but these pns are the three more uh, three most important and the most common is the closed radium perfringes that is causing what the gas gangrene and they show what the reverse cam test positive reverse cam test positive so these are the key important points about the closed radium perfringes that is they show the target hemolysis double zone of hemolysis nagler's reaction they show what the gas uh, because the gas can be and the reverse cam test positive the so, normal cam test positive we did what group b uh, the streptococcus that is a streptococcus agalicti and the reverse cam test where we we are uh, where are we doing for the closed stadium per fringes all right so closed radium per fringes is what again they are gram positive bacilli and they show the stormy clot reaction and, and the what the litmus milk test now what is that when we talk about the uh, food poisoning that we have already discussed that they show the target hemolysis or the double zone of the hemolysis and they are responsible for causing the gas gangrene nagler's test and the reverse cam test that we'll see further now when we talk about the reverse cam test when now when we talk about the reverse cam test now uh, it is used for differentiating the closed radium perfringes from other closed radium spe species if you remember the cam test wahan pe apne kya kiya tha we used the longitudinal streak of the staphylococcus aureus and we used the perpendicular streak of what the streptococcus agalacti and we saw uh, we just saw the arrow shaped hemolysis that is increased zone of the hemolysis because uh, streptococcus agalacti and the staphylococcus aureus at the point of meeting they synergize uh, synergistically increase the hemolysis similarly in this in this case we are using a longitudinal streak of what closed radium perfringes and the perpendicular streak of what the streptococcus agalacti here also we see increased zone of the hemolysis in the shape of the arrowhead that is synergistically the increased zone of the hemolysis is seen between the growth of the closed radium perfringes and the group b streptococcus and the group b streptococcus now uh, what are the diseases that are mainly caused now when we talk about the when we talk about the toxin of the closed radium perfringes toxins of the closed radium perfringes when we talk about the toxins of the closed radium perfringes there are mainly two types of toxins two types of toxins that is one is major and another is the minor one now major one is what alpha beta eta and minor ones are other toxins that are minor ones will come to the list and the most important one is the alpha toxin most important one is the alpha toxin which is the major toxin from the closed radium perfringes and it is major toxin and most important toxin it is most important toxin that is produced by 100% of the strain that is produced by 100% of the strain and it is having what it is having what lecithinase activity it is having what lecithinase activity okay lecithinase or phospholipase activity and they show what hot and cold type of phenomena similar to that of the beta hemolytic streptococcus okay so they are detected by what they are detected by the nagler's reaction by the nagler's reaction so most important toxin is the alpha toxin and it is present in the 100% of the strain and having the lecithinase and the phospholipase activity with hot and cold phenomena showing what showing what the nagler's reaction all right so what does it cause they cause the soft tissue infections and the alpha toxin that is produced by all the types they cause what the hemolysis and the vascular leakage with the cardiac dysfunction now it also causes what the food poisoning in the small intestine and inter it alters what the enterotoxin it alters altering the intestinal membrane permeability that is uh, if you remember that uh, clostridium that is having what the super antigen property
and patient will present with patient will present with history of history of food and meat consumption that is contaminated by these pores and the incubation period will be 8 to 48 hours incubation period will be between 8 to 48 hours all right now when we talk about the necrotizing enteritis when we talk about the necrotizing enteritis by the closed stadium perfringes what is the name for that that is uh, what is the name for that is what necrotizing enteritis it is mainly caused by the type C clostridium perfringens or the pig bell disease. Pig bell disease. Okay, please remember the pig bell disease. The pig bell disease is caused by what? The necrotizing uh, this clostridium perfringens. That is the pig bell disease. That is it is what happening after consumption of consumption of pork contaminated by the spores along with the history of consumption of sweet potatoes sweet potatoes all right <clears throat> that is caused causing the pig bell or the necrotizing enteritis and the pig bell is mainly caused by type c strain and the diarrhea by the type a please remember pig bell is caused by the type c of the closed radium perfringes of the closed radium perfringes these are the main toxins. These are the major and the minor toxins. <coughs> that is minor and the major toxins. Alpha toxin is the most important toxin that is present in the 100% of the strain of the closed stridium. And it is having what? Lethal toxin having the phospholipase activity. Other toxins alpha, beta, eta and the other minor toxins. Now, Nagler's reaction is very important. Nagler's reaction that is we see uh, in half of the half of the media we use the anti-alpha toxin and no anti-toxin in other half of the plate. Now we see we see the opacification opacification due to lecithinase activity of what the closed stadium perfringes where the antitoxin was not used compared to that of the other half so this is what the naglers reaction and it is used to differentiate the closed stadium perfringes from other strains and it is to see what the lecithinase activity lecithinase activity of the closed stadium perfringes now next is what the closed stridium titani we'll talk about the closed stridium titani a little bit uh closed stridium titani is also known as in infant it causes the disease is known as the eight day disease is known as the eight day disease and they show what the drumstick appearance mainly what the drum the, this drumstick appearance due to the central and the central and the terminal spores that is the drumstick appearance and they causes what is the first symptoms of the patient present is what the rice sardonicus or the log jaw that is the patient is having what a smiling face patient is having what a smiling face that is the Log jaw appearance, log jaw appearance, smiling, smiling face, and it causes what? Close to causing what? The presynaptic inhibition of the glycine or GABA. That is, they are what? They are inhibitory neurotransmitters, and it causes the presynaptic inhibition of the glycine and the GABA. That is what? Showing what the uh, causing what the hypertonia and in the involuntary sustained involuntary contraction that is presenting with the log jaw smiling face rises sardonicus or opisthotonus position of the patient all right the two toxins that are mainly responsible are the titanolysin titanolysin and and titanospasmin titanospasmin although uh, titanolysin is what oxygen labile toxin it is what oxygen labile toxin but it has no role no role in the virulence no role in the virulence all right and it is titanospasmin that is mainly responsible for the spastic paralysis for the spastic paralysis for the spastic paralysis and it shows what retrograde retrograde exonal transport retrograde exonal transport and what is the most common site is what spinal cord Spinal cord and the brain stem are the 
are the site of action are the site of action now it causes a presynaptic inhibition of the uh, uh, this inhibited neurotransmitters and causes the spastic paralysis retrograde axonal transport and may what is the main site of action it is a spinal cord and the brain stem incubation period incubation period is around 6 to 12 days incubation period is around 6 to 12 days all right so this is the mechanism of action that is tetanolysin as i told you tetanolysin doesn't have any role it has no role in the virulence what tetanolysin and tetanospasmin that is causing the presynaptic inhibition of the glycine and gaba and as i told it is what uh, causing the inhibition of the inhibitory neurotransmitters so causing the sustained spastic paralysis of the muscles spastic paralysis of muscles now when we talk about uh, the tetanus now what is the first sign what is the first sign what is the first sign of the general tetanus that is what that is lock jaw all right and what is the most common tetanus that is what juvenile and what is the most severe which one is the most severe is what eighth day disease or eighth day disease or neonatal tetanus or neonatal tetanus all right now when we do the diagnosis for the toxin of the clostridium tetani we generally for the local tetanus we check out for the erected tail of the mice erected tail of the mice and for the generalized tetanus toxin we also we see the opisthotonus position of the of the mice that is by the uh, culture and the uh, this uh, growth of the clostridium tetanus in the mice we see for the toxigenicity test we do the toxigenicity test in the mice all right then our next toxin is what next uh, uh, um, that sub family is what clostridium botulism okay now when we talk about the clostridium botulism we talked about the clostridium botulism is what is what having the sub terminal spores sub terminal spores if you remember okay they are having what they are having the sub terminal spores now they are having what sub terminal spores and when we talk about the toxin about the botulinum toxin now they are what they are neurotoxin they are what neurotoxin except except which variant that is except c2 toxin which is not a uh, neurotoxin it is of it is of it is of eight it is of eight antigenic types of it is of eight antigenic types from a b c a b c c2 d e f and g but what is that ki g g doesn't produce the disease g do not produce g do not produce the disease all right and c2 and c2 is what c2 c1 and c2 c2 is what an is not a neurotoxin it is what an enterotoxin please remember that g is not producing any disease and c2 is what an enterotoxin what is the most common what is the most common antigenic type that is causing the human human botulism is what a b e and f a b e and f all right and they are synthesized as the protoxins that are what later they are what the site of the action is what neuromuscular junctions now the autonomic ganglia pre and the post synaptic ganglion terminals they are what the site of the toxins 
and they cause the inhibition of release over the exciting neurotransmitters just like acetylcholine causing what the flaccid paralysis tetanus was causing causing what the tetanus was causing the spastic paralysis and the botulism toxin causes what the flaccid paralysis all right it causes what the flaccid paralysis and the most common human antigenic variants are a b e and f c2 is not a neurotoxin it is an antitoxin and g doesn't produce any disease g doesn't produce any disease incubation period is around incubation period is around 18 to 36 hours incubation period is around 18 to 36 hours and the patient will present with the history of consumption of the canned food having the history of the canned food now in the infants it causes what the floppy baby syndrome floppy baby syndrome that is a condition of what hypotonia hypotonia and it is due to the inhibition of the release of the neurotransmitter that is the acetylcholine and the site of action is an neuromuscular junction on both the and the synaptic terminals this is what floppy baby syndrome floppy baby syndrome other than this the patient presents with the patient starts with what diplopia diplopia dysphagia dysphagia dysarthria dry mouth dry mouth dilated pupil dilated pupil descending descending symmetrical flaccid paralysis Resenting symmetrical flaccid paralysis. Paralysis that is diplopia, dysphagia, dysarthria, dry mouth, dilated pupil, and the descending symmetrical flaccid paralysis. Now the most common is infant botulism. The most common is the infant botulism, and the thing that we need to remember, but it is not a preformed toxin. it is not a preformed toxin all the food poisoning by the colostridium botulinum is due to the preformed toxin in the canned food but infant botulism the toxin is not preformed the toxin is not preformed for the treatment we give what the equine derived anti botulism for the treatment we give what equine derived anti botulism So that is a disease that is caused by the Clostridium botulism. That is one is the food bot botulism that is causing for the descending symmetrical flaccid paralysis. And the clinical presentation we have already seen that is and what is the infantile botulism that is the floppy baby syndrome, floppy baby syndrome with the poor feeding and the poor gag reflex. The wound botulism that is after the wound the spores has been inoculated that is after the wound botulism. now next and the last one we'll talk about what the closed stadium difficile next last we'll talk about the closed stadium difficile ठीक है, so Clostridium difficile is what Clostridium difficile is what motile. General features of the Clostridium motile and it is what non-capsulated. What was the exception of the capsulated Clostridium? That was the Clostridium perfringens and it is very important. It is normal GI flora as well. It is normal GI flora as well and it it releases two types of toxins. That is one is the toxin A. and toxin b please remember toxin a is what an enterotoxin toxin a is an enterotoxin and toxin b is what cytotoxin it is what a cytotoxin ठीक है नाउ मेनली इन द पेशेंट्स हु आर कंज्यूमिंग ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक्स फ्रॉम लॉन्ग टाइम और हैविंग ऑलरेडी हैविंग द इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज्ड फीचर्स क्लोज रीडन डेफिसिल दे एक्चुअली द ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक्स दे ऑल्टर्स द नॉर्मल गट फ्लोरा एंड इन दैट मीडिया द क्लोज रीडन डेफिसिल क्विकली मल्टीप्लाइज एंड इट व्हाट इट एडर्स टू द एडर्स द नॉर्मल गट एंड इट इज ऑल्टर्ड बाय द ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक्स मेनली द क्लिंडामाइसिन थर्ड जनरेशन सिपेलो Foreign. So these are the risk factors leading toward the pseudo membrane formation in the gut. That is a pseudo membrane colitis. That is that a yellowish plaques form that is over damaged epithelium. Over damaged epithelium that is by the toxin A and B which causes the mucosal damage. Toxin A is what an endotoxin and toxin B is what cytotoxin. 
and what is the most common clinical features they will present with what that is the watery diarrhea that is what that is they will present with what watery diarrhea they will present with what watery diarrhea and that is 8 to 10 stools per day 8 to 10 stools per day Although the Clostridium difficile is also uh, Clostridium uh, difficile is also present in the normal feces and the normal GI flora, but under the uh, this aggravating factors, it causes what the watery diarrhea that is up to eight to ten stools per day. Alright, so this is the manifestation of the Clostridium difficile. So it is present in the carrier state and it is associated with the diarrhea that is uh, closed in deficit colitis causing what the pseudo colitis and toxic mega colon and it is a recurrent disease and what was the aggravating factor that patient is on the broad spectrum antibiotics broad spectrum antibiotics that is what the clindamycin the clindamycin the third generation cephalosporins they are important for causing the uh, for aggravating the pseudomembrane formation now we'll talk about uh, the close till now we have covered the most important points about the close stadium now uh, talk a little about the theory perspective as well for the students who are going to give the professional examination So they are what they are gram positive they are gram positive bacilli they are gram positive and the spore forming only two bacteria are what only two bacteria are what the spore forming one is the bacillus one is the bacillus and another is what the clostridium only the two spores forming that one is the bacillus and another is what the clostridium and in the bacillus in the bacillus the spores are what the spores are non-bulging and in the clostridium they are what bulging they are what bulging plus they are obligate anaerobe what were those examples of the obligate anaerobe it was a b and c that is actinomyces bacteroids and the clostridium all are motile because they are having the peritricus flagella because they are having what peritricus flagella and what is the name of the motility what is the name of the motility one the more that is a stately motility but what is the exception of the non-motile that we needed to remember is the closed stadium titanus and the closed stadium perfringes all are non-capsulated but again here as well another important exception perfringes and the butyricum now most of the closed stadium they are found in normally in the feces and they so uh, so as well closed stream difficile most of them poses poses a subterminal spores except that we need to remember the closed stadium titanium that is having what the that is having the terminal and the spherical spores spherical spore that is the drumstick giving the appearance of the drumstick appearance Closed stadium tertium having the terminal but oval spore that is what the tennis racket appearance and the bifermentus that is having what namse that is biferment is what central spores and the closed stadium perfringes also have the central spore. Coming to the sacrolytic versus proteolytic, sacrolytic species that is that is the turn RCM into the pink and the proteolytic species that comes the Robertson cooked media black with the foul and the pervasive order. Alright, so what is the example of the sacrolytic that is a closed bottle is a 
C, D, and E, and for uh, protolighting in the closed stadium tetanid. Now, when we talk about the closed stadium per fringes, closed stadium per fringes, we know that it is what capsulated very important. Although the closed stadium is non capsulated, but it is an exception that it is what it is an exception that it is what capsulated. It is an exception that it is what non motile. All right, and they are having the spores that are what oval and subterminal. Okay, another exception is that the spores they are what heat resistant, heat resistant, and they are not killed at what hundred degrees Celsius. They are not killed at what hundred degrees Celsius. Now they consist of two types of toxins. One is major. And another is minor. The most important toxin that we need to remember in the major is what alpha toxin is what alpha toxin that is what lecithinase toxin or phospholipase C toxin, and it is the principal major toxin that is responsible for the violence factor of the closed stadium per fringes. All right. On the basis of the toxin, they are further divided into five types, and the blood group produces very important. They produces what target hemolysis. Or double zone of hemolysis, or double zone of hemolysis, very very important that they show the target hemolysis on the litmus milk. They show the stormy appearance. Now they very important next is what they show the Nagler's reaction that is due to the lecithinase activity or the alpha toxin on the egg yolk media containing what the lecithin. Now infections that is they are primarily responsible for most commonly responsible for what causing the gas gangrene. Other closed stadium that is responsible for causing the gas gangrene is what PNS. That is a closed stadium per fringes, closed stadium novi, and the closed stadium septicum. Okay, so they are rapidly spreading edematous myonecrosis that is occurring in association with the severe wounds of muscle mass contaminated with the closed radium. What are the agents of the gas gangrene? Mainly, it is what closed radium per fringes that is type A. Okay, please remember it is the closed radium per fringes. Type A. Other than this, the novi septicum and the histolyticums, they are also the probable cause for the gas gangrene. Please remember the mnemonic that is by the PNSH. That is what clostridium perfringes, novi septicum, and the histolyticum. Uh, they are what they are responsible for causing the gas gangrene. Okay, gas gangrene. Now, incubation period is around incubation period is around 10 to 48 hours, and no pus in the site of the tissue damage with the pain and the capitation is what characteristic because it is causing what gas gangrene. What is the characteristic? That is the pain at the site and crepitations. All right. They neither produce they don't produce the spores at the site uh, neither in the Media. Now coming to lab diagnosis. When we talk about the lab diagnosis, it should be based on the clinical ground. The gram staining, gram staining, because we know that they are what gram positive. They are what gram positive bacilli, gram positive bacilli, and citron bodies and the pod shaped gram positive bacilli are what clostridium septicum. Closed radium septicum and the gram positive bacilli with subterminal oval spores is what closed radium novi. If the puff fringe is suspected, then it has to be confirmed by Nagler reaction and the reverse cam test and the reverse cam test. All right, so please remember that they show what they show the target hemolysis or the double zone of hemolysis. Nagler's reaction is positive and they show what the reverse cam test. Reverse cam test. Now, treatment is mainly surgery for the uh, gas gangrene, and what is the drug of the choice? It was penicillin, penicillin, and the clindamycin with hyperbaric oxygen. Other infections that are caused by the clostridium perfringens that is first is what the food poisoning. Food poisoning by the type A 
type a clostridium perfringens which is what an enterotoxin which is an enterotoxin and the spores as i already told that they are what heat resistant spores that is they are not killed just like the spores of other clostridium at 100 degree celsius so they are what found in the they contaminate the food okay that is food poisoning that is caused by what food poisoning is caused by the type a clostridium and clostridium perfringens and clostridium botulinum toxins are not killed uh, like other spores of the clostridium at 100 degree celsius so they are heat resistant that is causing what a food poisoning next is what the pigwell disease that is what necrotizing enteritis and it is due to the beta toxin of the clostridium perfringens type c please remember type a and type c type a is causing the food poisoning Okay. and type c is causing what the pig bell disease pig bell disease all right because type a is what type a is what causing the enterotoxin release enterotoxin other than this the beta the uh, bile tract infection urogenital brain abscess gas gangrene and thoracic infection but please remember most common it is causing the gas gangrene other than this the food poisoning by type a and type c is causing the pig bell that is a necrotizing enteritis all right coming to the next clostridium that is a no clostridium titani they are motile they are what motile except type 6 so they are motile except type 6 clostridium okay please remember clostridium they are what peritrichous flagella that is they all are what motile but exception was what exception was the clostridium perfringens that is they are non motile next is the clostridium titani that is type c clostridium kidney and they show the swarming motility on the blood agar swarming motility is mainly caused by the uh, this uh, proteus fibro para hemolyticus and the clostridium titani please remember this one point that they are showing what the swarming motility on the blood agar having two toxins one is the titanolysin but it doesn't have titanolysin that is having no lysin activity that is no role in the pathogenesis it has no role no role in the virulence it has no role in the virulence all right titanospasmin is mainly responsible for causing what the spastic paralysis for causing the spastic paralysis by inhibition of the release of the inhibitory neurotransmitters that is glycine and gaba okay now what is the root of injury it is mainly the tetanus is caused in where in the warm warm and the cold climate humid and the moist climate which is favorable for the growth of the clostridium and the root of uh, is what injury or the unhygienic surgery or abortion or delivery more common in the warm and the rural areas with fertile soil uh, soil and what is the first symptom what is the first symptom first symptom is what trismus trismus or lock jaw okay trismus or the lock jaw because it increases the masseter tone causing the descending tetanus paralysis it is what spastic paralysis hand and feet are spared hand and feet are spared and they maintain what a deep tendon reflex that are what exaggerated exaggerated in neonates difficult in feeding is the usual presentation with autonomic disturbance is maximum during second week and incubation period is around 6 to 10 weeks 6 to 10 days complication complication is what rises sardonicus with characteristic spasm of the facial muscles facial muscles and the appears to produce the grinding and opisthotonus position opisthotonus position and the rises sardonicus smiling face that is what the characteristic of the tetanus respiratory muscle spasm and non infectious it is uh, tetanus is what non infectious that is no person to person spread occurs and diagnosis is always clinical if the first person is what under the category a b and c according to that the treatment is done uh about for the tetanus 
all right if that belongs to a category a take the complete course of the tetanus toxoid and we'll talk about the uh, this category a b c and d and the tetanus toxoid later because we need to take a separate class for this to complete the uh, toxoid and we'll cover it under the toxin antitoxin class now Coming to the antibiotics, antibiotics play a role in the early infections. Before the infection, it is usually only to eradicate the source of the toxin. But if the toxin is already produced, antibiotics will not play a role. Antibiotics will only play a role in the early infections before the toxin expression and the toxin release has taken place. Once the toxin is released, uh, the antibiotics does not have much uh, role in this case. Metronidazole. Metronidazole uh, is what the drug of the choice and then is what the penicillin. Penicillin that is given for the 7 days. Antitoxin human tetanus immunoglobulin is given that is lasting for 30 days. Effect lasts for about 30 days and equine tetanus immunoglobulin dose 1500 international unit. Also right, what is the treatment and if it is early infection then only antibiotic is of use just before the release of the toxin. Metronidazole is the drug of the choice and the, we give the anti-human, uh, this human tetanus immunoglobulin and the equine tetanus immunoglobulin in the 1500 IU that is effect is lasting for 7 to 10 days. Or a primary immunization is done followed by the two do dose and in the adult two dose at one month interval with two booster at one year and the six year. Coming to other forms of the tetanus now one is the maternal tetanus. That is maternal tetanus is the tetanus that is occurring either during pregnancy or within six weeks after the uh, birth of the baby after the conclusion of the pregnancy whether with the birth or the miscarriage or the abortion. So what is maternal uh, tetanus that is tetanus that is occurring within uh, during pregnancy or within six weeks of pregnancy uh, a conclusion of the pregnancy be it miscarriage abortion or the birth next is the neonatal tetanus that is it is also known as the eighth day disease and it is the most severe one that is an illness that is occurring in a child who has a normal ability to suck and cry in the first two days of the life but loses its ability between third and the 28th day of life and become rigid and has passed it is also therefore known as the eight day disease although within two days after the birth the sucking reflex were normal but after that gradually they all will become rigid that is eight day disease and it is what also seasonal that is in the july august and mainly in the september seven practices are proposed to prevent or to prevent the neonatal tetanus that is a clean hand clean surface clean coat clean coat tie and the clean coat stump and the clean towel and the clean water so seven health uh, seven clean practices are pro proposed under rch neonatal tetanus is what eighth day disease and maternal tetanus is what tetanus that is occurring between pregnancy during pregnancy or after six uh, weeks after the pregnancy conclusion whether it be birth whether it be a miscarriage or abortion Now, neonatal tetanus elimination is based of neonatal tetanus elimination is based if the rate of neonatal tetanus is less than one per ten thousand or point one thousand live birth. Live birth. All right, and tetanus uh, tetanus toxoid coverage in the pregnant woman more than more than. 90% with attendant deliveries more than 75%. Now, coming to the closed stadium botulism, coming to the closed stadium botulinum. Now, botulinum toxin is the most toxin known till now. It is the most toxic uh, known to man, and it what it block the release of the neurotransmitters that is the acetylcholine, releasing causing what the flaccid paralysis, descending descending symmetrical, descending symmetrical flaccid paralysis. Okay, it what does it do? It causes the proteolytic. It causes the proteolytic cleavage of protein complex, which is the binding site of the ACH. So what does it do? It is a most toxic compound that is known, and it causes the pre and the uh, pre synaptic release of block the release of the acetylcholine. Okay, what does it do? It 
actually does the cleavage of the protein complex which is the binding site for the ACH to the presynaptic vesicles resulting in the blockage of the release of the ACH. Right. <coughs> Now, if it is bottled in toxin A or E, it causes the cleavage of the SNAP25. It is toxin C1, it causes cleavage of the syntaxin. It is the uh, B, D, F, and G, it causes the cleavage of the synaptobrevin. Just remember the name that what does it cause the cleavage of? If it causes the cleavage of the SNAP25, syntaxin or synaptobrevin. Synaptobrevin syntaxin or SNAP25. Now, the mainly responsible subtypes that is between A to G, A, B, E are responsible for the human disease and most responsible for causing what the human disease. Alright, I already told you, I already told you that G, G is not causing any disease and C is what is not a neurotoxin it is what an enterotoxin although the toxin are what the water toxin are what neurotoxin but c is an enterotoxin and g is not causing any disease all right botulism toxin c and d is bacteriophage coded if you remember the mnemonic for the bacteriophage coded toxin is what a b c d and e a standard for the shiga toxin b for botulinum toxin c for the cholera D for diphtheria and E for antitoxin of the streptococcus pyogens. So, B is what botulism toxin and that is the C and D. Remember, most human uh, pathogenic uh, toxin subtype is what A, B, E and G is not causing any disease. C is an antitoxin, otherwise botulism toxin is what a neurotoxin. Alright, botulism toxin is what causing the flaccid paralysis. It causes the flaccid paralysis. Descending flaccid paralysis and that is symmetrical. So, it is therapeutically used for the treatment of the blepharospasm and the strabismus. Other than the water of toxin, it is also produced by the butyricum parity. Now, toxin is replaced, uh, re liberated as protoxin. Please remember that it is liberated as a protoxin and it requires the trypsin or other proteolytic enzymes to convert it to the another other forms and it what is the main toxin is doing it is actually inhibiting the release of the ACH how that it causes the cleavage of the uh, cleavage of the uh, SNAP25 syntaxin or synaptobraving these are what like this is the junction the synaptic junction it is what blockage of the acetylcholine because it causes the cleavage of this binding site for the ACH. It causes the cleavage. So, AC, ACH doesn't find any site to bind and it causes the release of the blockage of the acetylcholine causing the flaccid paralysis. Causing what the flaccid paralysis, descending flaccid paralysis by causing the cleavage of the SNAP25, syntaxin and synaptobraving. And how does it act? Initially, it is released as a protoxin and it requires what proteolytic enzyme for its activation, for its activation. G is not, G variant of the subtype of the toxin is not causing any disease. E is what, uh, this C is what an enterotoxin and the human pathogen mainly disease caused by the A, B and E. It differs, it is an exception for other exotoxin as it is produced what intracellularly and appears outside only after autolysis of the cell, which is a feature of what an endotoxin. So it differs from the other exotoxin. Blocking of the ACH is permanent, but the action is short lasting as a recovery occurs after two to four months. Once the new terminal exons are formed. Alright, once the blockage has been done and the cleavage of the site has been done, it is permanent. But until new terminal uh, exons are formed, the symptoms last up to 2 to 4 months. Now, another is the food bond botulism. It is due to what? It is due to the preformed. It is due to the preformed toxin in the that is present in the canned food it is present in the canned food and the patient will present with the 5d features that is what diplopia dysphagia dysarthria constipation descending symmetrical paralysis and the deep tendon reflexes are what deep tendon reflexes are what decreased and while if you remember in the titness the dtr were exaggerated it was what the spastic paralysis no sensory involvement takes place. Very important. Please remember that no sensory involvement takes place and no diarrhea 
feature is what constipation constipation is what clinical feature so it is 5t that is diplopia dysphagia this arthritis dtr decrease and descending paralysis and the constipation wound botulism is due to the contamination of the spores to the wound surface infant botulism is due to the ingestion of the spores mainly the source is what honey honey and it is what causing the floppy baby syndrome which is what which is hypotonia of the muscles hypotonia of the muscles and it is due to the clostridium botulinum toxin that is the infant botulism causing what the floppy baby syndrome and the hypotonia last one is what the closed stadium difficile closed stadium difficile and very important it causes what the pseudo membrane pseudo membrane colitis what are the risk factors risk factor is it what the person on the broad spectrum antibiotics that is mainly clindamycin third generation cephalosporin or ampicillin penicillin and the patient who is what having the prolonged hospital stay on the prolonged intake of the broad spectrum antibiotics two types of toxin two types of toxin a and b as i told ki a is what a is an enterotoxin and b is what b is cytotoxin all right and they can be demonstrated on the hep 2 or by the elisa diagnosis is by culture is more sensitive and specific methods for the toxin demonstration is done and uh, pseudo membrane is seen by the colonoscopy remember very important is the treatment treatment kya hai treatment apart from the apart from the pseudo membrane colitis apart from the pseudo membrane colitis it also causes the paralytic ileus it also causes the paralytic ileus theek hai it also causes what the paralytic ileus and the treatment the drug of the choice is what metronidazole in case of the mild case but if the case is what severe is the mild to moderate metronidazole is the drug of the choice but is the case is the severe then the drug of the choice is what vancomycin vancomycin with metronidazole that is given so metronidazole that is iv is given in case of the in uh, case of the severe severe manifestation of the pseudo membrane colitis so what is the drug of the choice it is a vancomycin so uh, this was it about uh, the clostridium difficile uh, and the clostridium we'll just see the images that are important one was the they were showing what the stately motility stately motility and other important points these uh, these spores are very important please remember this ki spherical spores are shown with the clostridium tetani and the oval by the clostridium tertium all right this is macintosh culture method for the clostridium because of for the and aerobic media robertson cooked mead media robertson cooked mead media very important because it is uh, used for growth of the anaerobic culture media that is having the beef heart particles beef heart particles having what reduced glutathione having what reduced glutathione now uh, revising fast about the about the clostridium now clostridium per fringes it is what the most important thing we need to remember is that he clostridium per fringes what is the exception of the clostridium per fringes that one is that they are what capsulated they are what capsulated that one we need to remember is that they are what 
encapsulated and another is that ki the spores are not killed at 100 degrees celsius and they are capsulated plus they are what non motile plus they are what non motile and grow at 45 degrees celsius grow at 45 degrees celsius other than this they show what the target hemolysis target hemolysis or the double zone of hemolysis and they have two types of toxin one is major another is minor in the major it is the alpha toxin that is most important and having the lecithinous activity showing what the naglors test which is to use to differentiate the closed stadium per fringes with uh, from another other closed stadium because they shows the lecithinous activity and the opacity formation in the media that is not containing the anti toxin other than this the reverse cam test the reverse cam test that is the zone arrowhead zone of the hemolysis beta hemolysis when they come in the contact with the contact with the streptococcus agalacti streptococcus agalacti mainly responsible for what responsible for causing the uh, reverse cam test we have seen mainly responsible for causing for what the gas gangrene although uh, gas gangrene that is pain is present at the site plus crepitus plus crepitus that is a characteristic for the gas gangrene apart from the closed stadium per fringes it is the pns that is the closed stadium per fringes no v and the ticum is mainly responsible for causing the uh, the gas gangrene other than histolyticum as well Another clinical features is that the two syndromes mainly the closed stadium per fringes the two toxins uh, major and the minor toxin alpha toxins mainly reverence factor and in the when we talk about the antigenic variant when we talk about the uh, it is what type C it is what the type C closed stadium per fringes that is mainly responsible for the pig bell disease pig bell disease and the type A that is responsible for causing what the diarrhea all right alpha toxins we have seen that is a lethal toxin with the phospholipase activity naglor's reaction we have seen that is it is what opacification due to the lecithinase activity of the alpha toxin and you can see the opacity here it is said no toxin uh, this side no toxin is acting because of the anti alpha toxin now talking about the closed stadium treatment, it is causing eighth day disease and it is causing the presynaptic inhibition of the glycine and the GABA and they show what the drumstick appearance because of the spores that is terminal and the oval that is what drumstick appearance. The first major symptom is what the lock jaw, lock jaw or the trismus or the trismus. Okay. And the rhesus sardonicus and opisthotonus is the clinical presentation. Two types of toxin that is titanolysin and titanospasmin. But titanolysin doesn't have any virulence, has no roles in the virulence. The main site of action is what spinal cord, spinal cord and what the brain and the brain stem, brain stem. And it is what the retrograde, retrograde axonal, retrograde axonal transport retrograde axonal transport and the brain stem and the spinal cord are the main site of incubation uh, action and the incubation period is about 6 to 10 days is about 6 to 10 days causing what causing what uh, this spastic paralysis spastic paralysis take it Causing what the spastic paralysis. You can remember is it namic at titanospasmin that is causing the spasticity. Spastic paralysis due to uh, uh, this due to the inhibition of the inhibited neurotransmitters. Most common tetanus is for ju juvenile. Most common is the juvenile, and the most serious one is what the infant. Uh, this neonatal neonatal tetanus or the eighth day disease is most severe one is most severe one to see the toxigenicity test we do in the tail of the mouse and to we see what the erected tail for the local tetanus after inoculation and the opisthotonus after the generalized inoculation closed stadium botulism is mainly causing the uh, floppy baby syndrome and it is causing the uh, inhibition of the release of the acetylcholine and what does it do is that it breaks down the uh, does the cleavage of the binding site for the ACH on the postsynaptic junction so it acts with the pre and the postsynaptic terminals 
and the and at neuromuscular junctions now malignant factor is mainly a b c d that is a, a um, eight antigenic types and it is the g it is the g that is causing no disease and c2 that is what that is an antrotoxin although the botulism toxin is a neurotoxin but c2 is an antrotoxin and a b a b and e they are mainly responsible for causing the human disease causing for the human disease and what does it do it causes the placid paralysis it causes the placid paralysis placid paralysis all right patient present with the 5 t's patient present with the 5 t's with diplopia dysphagia dysarthria decreased dtr and the descending symmetrical paralysis if descending symmetrical paralysis this is floppy baby syndrome with the hypotonia with the hypotonia the important point is that there is no sensory involvement takes place no sensory involvement and uh, no altered no altered mentation okay so no sensory involvement and no altered mentation and the patient present with the feature of what constipation constipation not diarrhea ठीक है पेशेंट प्रेजेंट विद द फाइव डेज फाइव डेज दैट इज द डिप्लोपिया डिसआर्थ्रिया एंड डिसफेजिया विद ड्राई माउथ डिक्रीज डीटीआर एंड द डिसेंडिंग फ्लैसिड पैरालिसिस एंड द पेशेंट डजंट प्रेजेंट विद अ प्रेजेंट विद कॉन्स्टिपेशन विद कॉन्स्टिपेशन फूड बॉन्ड बॉटुलिज्म इज व्हाट ऑफ फूड बॉन्ड बॉटुलिज्म द इनक्यूबेशन पीरियड इज अबाउट 18 टू 36 आवर्स 18 टू 36 आवर्स एंड इट इज मेनली व्हाट canned food that is having the preformed toxin that is having the preformed toxin infiltrant toxin that botulism is what floppy baby syndrome with the hypotonia and the decreased uh, gag reflex and the poor sucking reflex wound botulism that is the infected wound with the spores of the prostridium botulism for the treatment we give what equine derived antibodies antibotulism All right. Now coming to the closed room deficit, what is the most common risk factor is that the patient on a long hospital stay and taking the broad spectrum antibiotics, mainly the clindamycin and third generations, since many days that is altering the normal gut flora and it is what the closed room deficit is able to flourish in that media and causing what the formation of the pseudo membrane, pseudo membrane colitis, pseudo membrane colitis. Alright and paralytical ileus, paralytic ileus. Two types of toxin A and B. A is what an enterotoxin and B is what cytotoxin. Is what cytotoxin. Although the closed end episode is present in the normal gut flora as well and the feces of the normal person as well, but uh, if in case of the aggravating factors and precipitating factors, it alters the normal gut flora and itself multiplies, causing the formation of the uh, altering altering the mucosal barrier, mucosa of the epithelium, and causing the pseudo membrane colitis. This formation, okay, and the spores. We remember that the spores are mainly what the tennis racket and the subterminal spores. Uh, this tennis racket spores with the terminal and oval shape, along with the closed cilium tertium. Now, this is the clinical manifestation. all right we have covered this uh, important points that uh, about the closed stadium now toxins we have already seen gas ganglion we have seen the agents we have seen that is the pns lab diagnosis we have seen that they are what gram positive bacilli the so gram positive bacilli that is the without spores and the citron body so the bot shape is crossium septicum mm -hmm. treatment is what treatment <coughs> for the gas gangrene the mainstay of the treatment is what surgery and the drug of choice is what penicillin and the clindamycin all right food poisoning we have already seen that for the food poisoning it is the type 
A endotoxin and they are heat resistant spores that is the clostridium perfringens and other one which is the clostridium botulinum they both are what heat resistance pig bell by what the type c two types of the clostridium perfringens type a and the type c that's mainly we read type a is mainly responsible for the enterotoxin that is for the food poisoning and the type c for the necrotizing enteritis that is the pig bell disease pig bell disease kidney we have seen but please remember that it's all are motile except type c which is non motile Tetanolysin has no role, and spasmin is what causing the spastic paralysis by blocking the inhibitory neurons. Symptoms are more in the warm climate and the rural areas, and uh, in in root of is injury or the abortion or the pregnancy, and incubation period remembers is about six to ten days. Complication rises sardonicus and opisthotonus position. Diagnosis is always clinical, and metronidazole is the drug of the choice. Other forms maternal during pregnancy or within uh, six weeks after the conclusion of the pregnancy. Neonatal is also known as eighth day disease because in the first two days the uh, sucking reflex are normal, but soon later it actually becomes rigid and the spasmodic. All right. Now coming to the uh, clostridium botulism, that is the most uh, toxic substance known to us and blocks the release of the acetylcholine. Please remember it causes the cleavage of the synapsin, taxin, synaptobrevin and the SNAF and it causes uh, binds on the postsynaptically causes the cleavage of what? Cleavage of the uh, pre, uh, this SNAP, syntaxin uh, and the synaptobrevin that is the site where the acetylcholine binds. Most pathogenic human is A, B, C and C2 is an enterotoxin jabki close botulinum botulism is what cytotoxin and type C and is what bacteriophage coded. Alright, now it causes the 5 days a diplopia, dysphagia, dysarthria and no sensory involvement and no altered mentation and constipation is a feature, constipation is a feature. Deficit, we have seen the risk factors that is the prolonged intake of the broad spectrum antibiotics and A and B that is antotoxin and the cytotoxin. Treatment of the choice is what metronidazole for the mild cases and the vancomycin for the severe cases it is what vancomycin. So we are done, we are done with what? We are done with the closed radium. That was a very important topic. So uh, thank you for today's session and do like, do like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notification when you are uh, about any video that is going to take uh, take place on the Unacademy channel or the Unacademy app and do follow me, do follow me on the Unacademy YouTube channel as well as on the app and on Instagram, on the Telegram that is the Unacademy. That's crack need PG. Okay, and thank you for today's session. I hope that it was clear. It was important se session. Next session, we'll discuss about the important MCQs about the important. Important MCQs about the closed stadium. Um, So take care until then bye bye and please do attend the may uh, the test that is an academy is providing every month so that you can analyze your performance and you can actually know where you stand uh, in the examination all the students preparing for the fmg we have also i have also i'm taking session for that as well and same for the INI CT on the special classes on the academy do follow me on uh, the uh, an academy app uh, on the
YouTube app as well as the channel and please do use my code that is muskan 10 to get 10% of the discount whether you enroll into the Un Academy or whether you subscribe for the Un Academy for any of the uh, competitive exam that you're preparing across India so please do use my code that is muskan 10 so that you can get benefit of the 10% discount and you easily get the PDF downloads from the telegram channel and the uh, uh, notes on the Un Academy uh, students app you easily get the pdf and you can download them and help yourself by preparing so take care until then bye bye i'll see you tomorrow at 10 pm at the same time